Yo. What's going on, everybody? What's happening? Back at it again. We're back at it again. Mom, what's going on? Amanda. Lane asks, am I early? Well, that's a relative term, right? What it's early to you might not be early to some other folks, I guess. I don't know. Early enough. Okay. Um, just spraying my palette there, trying to get my colors going. So let me uh, get ready here. Not too many pins everywhere. I need to get a little more organized. What's going on, Jeremy, Andy, Christine, Laura, Enrique? What's happening, folks? Thanks for tuning in. Glad to see you guys here, as always. So let's jump right into this. Uh, you know what? I'm going to draw with something a little darker today and just see what happens. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with this 4B. My pencil's all wet. I just sprayed it. Okay. I'm going to draw with this 4B pencil. Let's just see what happens. So I'm actually going to modify this photo. So if we look at this photo, I'm going to modify this photo a little bit. You know, I, I uh, you're not too late, Annabelle. I just started. I literally just started. But I'm going to modify this photo. I'm going to add some shadows. So we're going to see. I'm going to add some interesting shadows to this very front building. Hopefully it'll work. You know, I, I kind of did it digitally a little bit earlier, and it, it seemed to work. So Zahra Mohammed, what's up? What's going on? Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so, I don't know, I thought this was an interesting photo, too. You know, it's kind of like, it's a very interesting type of subject, you know? Like, having this doorway or something, and this, it's, it's, I don't know, it, it seemed cool to me. It seemed cool. So we'll try to see if it works as a painting. It might not. But I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna try. Okay, so let's this stuff isn't too important back here, but it's gonna help a little bit. I'm going to modify this shadow as well. So there's a shadow back here. I don't really like where the point of it is hitting. The point is like, it's like a tangent on the building to the, to the building. So I'm just going to modify that slightly. So this is all shadow. So what I'm going to do, going on Matthias, Nathan, thanks for tuning in. So let's work on this building now. So it looks like the door is pretty much in the middle. It's kind of boring in a way, but uh, you know, my paper is kind of a different aspect ratio than the photo. So yeah, I might end up cropping out some of this. Huh. Or do I just make it smaller? Maybe I just make it smaller. We show more of the top windows. I think let's do that. So let's see the top of the door. It's up here. Let's see if we can make this fit. Can make it work. So like I said, I'm gonna modify some of this this building, like with the shadow. I'm gonna add some shadows and stuff to make it hopefully more interesting. my goal. Okay, this will fit. This will fit just fine. They're a little too square. Okay, a little too square. So let's just modify the sides here. Oh, 
Although I still haven't really drawn the center of them. Yeah, it's better. Okay, all right. Making good progress here. Got the door frame going on. And some little thing here. Yeah, it's it's a pretty cool scene. It's pretty it's nice, you know, it's like kind of a two thirds two thirds of building, one third this, so uh, yeah, hopefully the colors will look good and stuff. You know, I don't know if I can match them that well, but we'll see. Um Yeah, I've been yeah, I've really been trying to modify my references if I can. Sometimes I don't really need to, you know, it just depends. But um what's going on, Amex Jam? Thanks for tuning in. Glad you could make it. Yeah, there's a lot of solid shapes and angles in this one. Yeah, I agree. I agree. But I'm going to, what I'm going to do, what I did earlier digitally was, was really interesting. So I ended up somewhere over here. I added, and I played around with this a little bit. So I'm going to add like a shadow that comes down. I don't know if it, if I wanted to hit the door or not. I don't know which angle I want the shadow to be at. But I know I want it to come off this wall and come in this way, like this. So actually, this line here wouldn't be there. So this whole entire side would be shadow, like from this building. It's hard to show it, but basically this here, and then these buildings. So this kind of thing would all be in shadow. So I have this one big shadow shape here, and then I'm gonna have like an, you know, I don't, I guess I should just do like an angle down like this, something like that maybe, and have it go over this window. So I know it doesn't look like much, and this is kind of, it's a little weird to have it right there. So I don't know about this angle but something like that. And it makes it way more interesting, way more dynamic because we're having these angles in here and it's leading us to, you know, I think I might overlap it with the door possibly just slightly. Might make it more interesting. I don't know yet, but let's draw these windows up here. These aren't really that important. You know, we got a lot of blank space here, so a lot of fun to play around with, hopefully. Um, actually, this needs to come up a little bit more. So like this overhang type of thing here. Nice. Okay. Um, yeah, I don't know too much about what... Hopper uh, emphasizing his work, but yeah, I guess I guess so. Yeah, I haven't seen a lot of his work, but I, I kind of know his the style of it, and I would imagine he has like a lot of. I've seen some scenes that are very perspective and angles and stuff. So, I guess yeah, but I have no clue. If I'm being dead honest, yeah, I think I'm gonna have this come so here. Like more like that. So it's gonna overlap the door and then come down. I really want it to come back this way because it just looked good. Now what is casting that shadow and, and what kind of shape would make that? It's not really important to me, right? What's important is that I'm I'm taking this shadow shape that was over here and I'm merging it with this one in the, f in the foreground. So I'm having, connecting all my dark shapes. It's basically what I'm trying to do. So this is all gonna be dark. You know, this whole thing back here, shadow. So there's some buildings back here. Windows and stuff, these aren't really that important. 
but they're there. Blah, blah, blah. This really isn't important back here. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to paint it in color. Yes, I will. I just have to get it drawn on first, you know. Now, so this door, it's kind of like a skinny, weird thing. I don't know if I really want to draw it like that. Like if I, if I want like this like weird window thing with a skinnier door. It's kind of interesting. It kind of breaks up the space nicely. So maybe I can suggest that somehow. Something like that. Yeah, that kind of breaks up the space nicely, so. Huh, interesting. So the shadows under here. Like interesting things here, the shadows, that could help. There's also a sign on the wall here. It's kind of cool. I have like a little bit of sign and then there's a shadow coming off of it like this. Yeah, like I said, I don't know if these shadows and angles really like make sense scientifically or realistically, but I'm not too worried. I'm, I'm just worried about like creating something interesting here, so. I feel like this is kind of cool. These angles looks nice. It's going to look different and dynamic. Is the door open? No, it's not. I don't think it is. It's just kind of far back and set in there. Um, and like I said, I'm, I'm changing. I'm getting rid of this like overhang shadow. Don't need that. You know, we'll just have like a little darker under here. Uh, this could still be pretty dark, all of this, but I do like having some of it lit up. It's kind of nice. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. I just gotta be careful here with this wall. I wanna make it interesting. I don't wanna make it just flat color. So I really want, I'm gonna have to like, be on my game here, my top, my top game here when I'm painting this. So I'm kind of thinking in my mind right now, like what am I, what am I planning? Oh, so these are actually like w shutters in the windows. Okay. Interesting. Now that I'm actually looking at this scene. And we also have a shadow back here which we can connect to this window, which will visually connect down to the rest of these shadows. This will all be a shadow, this whole area. Do it. Yeah, well, I got to plan a little bit in my brain. You know? I can't just like do it. And then I'll be like, oh, I should have just planned that better. You know, I agree with actions speak louder than words, but sometimes, you know, you gotta have planned actions. You can't just go in there with no plan. I work sometimes, but having a plan is important too. So this is my focal point right here. I gotta remember that. So now I'm just trying to think of colors and stuff around here. I don't want to just copy the photo. So I'm thinking maybe a slight bit of warm. Keep it, keep it gray, gray down, but warm, warm building back here to counteract all this cooler blue. And maybe go a little bit warmer in the foreground with the light areas. 
Okay, so let's do all the light first, I guess. I'm gonna wet the paper too, come on. Uh, just because it's kind of hot in my apartment. Okay. It's like 102 degrees outside, and just now before the live stream was the first time I turned on my air today. So, like, I keep it pretty hot in my apartment. It's like 80 something. 80, actually. I'm bringing it down to 79, so. So, let's see. Um, I kind of want to differentiate the sky a little bit from the building. So, I'm going to make the sky a little bit lighter, I think. More gray. Just trying to show you guys I'm mixing up some color right now. Um, are you going to try and capture the old faded paint of the wall of the building? Yeah, I kind of, I kind of want to like get some kind of something going on there. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it yet. You know, probably at the end, one idea I could do is like a little bit of splattering at the end as well to give some of the darker stuff. And for the lighter areas, I'll just probably leave it like the white of the paper. Um, I can also glaze with just a l little bit of darker blue um, once this first initial layer dries. So that's something I can do as well. So that looks pretty nice already, actually. I think if I just soften all that, I'll do some nice like cloud shapes. So I'll just kind of let that do its thing. Um, just let that do its thing, whatever it's going to do. And we'll just start painting into these, you know, these buildings and stuff, they're not that important back there to me. So just mixing up some more color here. Taking my time with this one, folks. Like I said, a little warmer building back there, just to counteract. Just to counteract what's going on in the foreground, I think. That'll be my hope. My only hope. And go like some grayer buildings back here. Maybe bleed them together a little bit. Okay, making good progress, I think. Slow and steady. So we're gonna do the whole ground here, I just realized. This is all gonna be shadow. So we'll go warm first, and then I'll go back over it with cool. It's the idea anyway. Let's hope, let's hope it works. All 
I don't want to just fill everything in, right? So I want to be conscious of what I'm doing here. Get like a sketchy kind of look, you know, like I'm painting this from life or something. So let's go light with this ground. There we go. I like that. Left some dry brushing marks there and stuff. Let's try to soften this edge a little bit here. Don't need it to be like perfect, you know. Hey Jesse, thanks for tuning in. Over on uh, Facebook, cool, cool. All right, so this is my main <laughs> this is my main focal point. Let's see if we can get this an interesting color here. Interesting color blue. I'm not really sure how to go about this one. Uh, so I'm just gonna try my best here, folks. As always. Oh, we just dripped there. It's all right. Hopefully, we won't get much of a bloom. Get a little bit, but not important. Not important. Okay, so we want like moving color, right? So let's get some. Uh, can even try to get some purple in there. I think it'll be really nice looking. So this one's going to be all in shadow, so let me just go over that part. Okay, well, interesting so far, interesting. Uh, which one did you mean, Enrique? Burnt Sienna? I don't use Burnt Sienna. It's um, transparent red oxide and like yellow ochre-ish kind of colors. Got a lot of bleeding here, but I'm gonna do another layer over the shadow, so I'm not too concerned about that right now. Um, so this doorway. Let's try to get this doorway in there.
Okay, hopefully this turns out good. Okay, let me turn this down for you guys. <laughs> there we go. It's a little bit more realistic. It's like very bright earlier. Always happens. Always happens. Because I go from white paper to, you know, paper full of colors, so... Always happens. A little bit of Viridian in there, really nice. I think it works well. That Viridian right here, you can barely see. You see it more in person actually, but it works really well with these other cooler colors around it. It's pretty nice. I like it. So this is pretty much the first stage. It's going to come together in a bit, hopefully. Come together a bit more as I continue. But that's pretty much the first stage, I think. It's pretty solid. It's pretty solid. Um, yeah, this is a quill brush. It's the Princeton Neptune number eight. My favorite brush ever, literally. Yeah, I've used it for plain air, use it for everything. Um, there's a link for it in the chat. Yep. Um, so if anybody's wondering, this is the palette of colors that I use. I don't normally use all of them, every painting, but these are the colors that I have available to me. Um, they're all M. Graham brand colors, so that's the kind of paint that I use. Um, Arches Cold Press 140 pound paper. Let's dry this real quick. Uh, be sure to hit the like button, folks, if you're tuning in. Friday, man, hit the like button. Thank you guys so much for June joining in Friday evening here in California. Also, be sure to check out my website, shaderfineart.com. We've got some watercolor paintings on there. I'm going to be adding more this weekend, I think. I have a bunch more I need to add. Um, I also have some pen and ink drawings. I'm, i got a bunch more to add of those, too, from last year. And, uh, yeah, check out my website. I also have a support page. There's other pages on there. i got a blog page, all kinds of stuff. Just go check it out. Love to hear from you. See what you think. Yeah, I recently updated my website like two months ago or something, and I had to redo my entire store. So now I got to re upload all the old paintings I used to have for sale. So I got to re upload, rename everything, re redo everything, which is fine. It's not a big deal. It's just, yeah. Yeah, SG Johnson, man, 140 pounds. That's where you got to go. That's, that's, the, that's, the, that's a good standard. Mid, middle ground. I also have 300 pound that my grandmother bought me, uh, I think last year. I st I'm afraid to use I, I need to use it, but I'm afraid to. One day I will. I will one day. Hopefully soon. But yeah, 140 pound is uh, pretty middle ground. Good, good paper to use. <laughs> it's not literally 140 pounds. I see what you're doing there. I see it. <laughs> you got me on that one, bro. I fell for it. Okay. <clears throat> so you see the little variation in the windows we got here? We got some little green, blue, purpley blue, blue, blue. <laughs> we got a little bit of variation on the building too here. You know, we got like 
turquoisey blue with some purples and, and grayish kind of looks more grayish blue i'm pretty happy with everything you know definitely with this second layer we're going to darken a lot of stuff and it's going to really bring i think it's going to bring this together i can kind of see this one in my mind hopefully hopefully my mind is is right yeah arches i mean it's pretty pricey i guess uh like seven dollars a sheet but to be honest, I'll show you guys real quick because I did it today. I'll show you. Uh, oh, shoot. So this is what I did earlier before the stream. So I took, yeah, here we are. So this is, oh, it's missing some stuff. Oh, wait, no, it's not. Sorry, folks. One, two, three. One, two, three, four. Boom. Okay. So from one sheet of paper, right? So this is why I love painting small. And, and I, I just love doing smaller works like 9 by 12s and stuff. Uh, maybe one day I'll eventually get to bigger stuff, you know. But for now, I'm just more minimal. But I'll show you guys real quick. So this is the cool thing. On that one big sheet of paper that's like 7 bucks, right? Um, I get, I cut it, I cut it all down. I measure it out, cut it down. I get four nine by twelves. So four of the paintings you're seeing here, right? And then I get two six by eights and a six by six. So we got some other smaller, like kind of like, this is almost like plain air type of stuff, like really small, like studies. Just quick sketches. So two six by eights and a six by six. And if you want to do really small, like I've done a few of these, like color studies or just head studies. Four, I think these are four by sixes. Uh, let me check real quick. Yeah, I think these are six by four. Yeah, four by sixes, you get four of those. So from that one sheet, I can make one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 11 paintings, different sizes that are, you know, they're small. But imagine if you just sell one painting, like if I sell this one painting today, if somebody buys this for like 70 bucks or whatever, you know, th there's a lot of potential in that one sheet of paper. You get what I'm saying? So like, you know, I can, I, I understand if like you're not selling your work, but even if you sold it for seven bucks, you still get you're able to buy another sheet of paper for just one painting, you know. I cut the paper. I personally cut the paper with a, uh, a few weeks ago, I finally got some good box cutters. So I just cut it with these uh, box cutters I got. Pretty nice, got these on Amazon. But yeah, these are really, really nice. So that's how I cut it. And I have a, I have a self-healing uh, mat I lay on the floor so when you cut it it doesn't really like mess it up a lot it's a self-healing mat so that's kind of how I do it yeah I know what you I know what you're saying uh, SG Johnson yeah definitely you're probably using like um, I used that kind of paper before too as well like in my older sketchbooks my very first plein air sketchbook I had um, uh, it's like pulp paper. It's not see this is a hundred percent cotton paper The other one is pulp like made from like plant fiber and stuff. It's just not as good um, And you don't get as it doesn't The paint in the water the the paper doesn't like absorb it as well. It like it leaves like spots and stuff um, Yeah, I know what you mean Enrique. Yeah, it's a, it's a shame where in other countries and stuff it costs so much but um you know, there's other papers out there you could try. I'm sure there's something, you know, they have Fabriano. I don't know how much that is, but, you know, there's other probably high-quality papers you can try that are just as good. But, um... Yeah. Here, I'll show, I'll show real quick my first uh, watercolor plein air sketchbook. Yeah. 
I'll show you guys. I'll show you guys real quick. It's from Alaska. I only did like seven paintings. So I didn't really get a lot done that I wanted. Actually, that wasn't my first one. Oh, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. Never mind. <laughs> I'm done. Yeah, this is my first one. This one, it's from, uh, you get these on Amazon. I'll show you guys real quick. This is a um, field watercolor journal. It's it's crappier paper. It's cold press, 140 pound, acid free. So it's still, it's good paper. It's not bad, but it's definitely, it gives you, I'll just try to show you guys if I can. Yeah, here we go. This is a good example. Oh, uh, you can't really see it. Okay, I'll show you on this. See, it gives you these different kinds of, you get a lot of hard edges and just the way that it goes on the paper, it's very different than, than like this. You know, this gets like absorbed differently somehow. Um, but you just, you can still paint with it. I mean, obviously I still got some good paintings out of it. These are all plain air from life, you know. Got some goose, geeses here. You know, there's some good, it's it's possible to do. You just have to get used to the paper. You know, you just have to get used to whatever materials you use. Um, yeah, that's really the trick about it. That's really the thing about it is like, um, yeah, this was my first watercolor, plain air from Alaska. And actually some of this is gouache over top. I had like white gouache on my palette at that time. So I struggled a bit. I definitely struggled a bit. And this painting, this one, it was so cold outside. I mean, it was like, it was just so cold and windy. Just terrible. <laughs> I remember that one. The rest of these were kind of painted in the car. So we got some white gouache, dry brush. I, it was really tough, man. It was really tough painting this stuff from life. And I struggled a lot, as you can see, just doing too many layers and over painting it and but I started getting good at the end. Like this one's not that bad. I kind of overpainted the foreground, but I like the color harmony. I like the structure. I painted this one many times in the studio. And then I started getting good, like right here in the trip, I started understanding the watercolor paper and the stuff a bit, and then the trip ended. So I didn't really paint enough on the trip. Didn't really have time, but that was kind of my first little journey of plain air watercolor. Uh, just for those who were interested, I guess. <laughs> just a quick little intermission there, folks. All right, let's get back into this painting. It's pretty much, it's pretty dry now. So sorry about that, but you know, sometimes it's cool to talk about some other things here. Uh, probably like 20 to 30 minutes each is probably an average. You know, there's some there's some plain airs I've painted in like four minutes, and there's some that have taken me like 45. So it just depends on what scene you're kind of painting. But usually, most of my plain air, they range from 20 anywhere from like 15 to 30 minutes is like the average I would imagine. You know, I've done sunsets in like four or five minutes where I had to paint really quickly, um, and I've painted like architecture in a house. Or part of a house that took me like 50 minutes, so uh, 45 minutes. So yeah, it just depends. Depends on the subject, and I sometimes I would put a timer on on my phone for 20 minutes, and I would literally start drawing the sketch and then finish the painting within those 20 minutes because I didn't want to overwork it. That's I did that many times. I did that with uh, when I went to Paris and I did, painted the Arc de Triomphe. I literally put a timer on my phone for 20 minutes and just stopped when the timer went off because I did not want to over, overdo it. Okay, so let's get a shadow color here. I'm not really sure what to do. Some kind of dark blue, bluish gray shadow color. That looks pretty good, I think. Maybe make it a little cooler. Let's 
So here, here goes everything, folks. Let's see if we can see if I can pull this off. So let's start right here. So this whole area is just going to be covered with shadow. Let me move these brushes so I don't get in my way. I deserve way more attention. Uh, okay, thanks. I appreciate it. Grape, grape soda. I think you deserve way more attention than grape soda. Grape soda's pretty good, right? So, I think grape soda needs more attention. So we're just gonna pretty loosely just paint in these uh, shadows here. So this is all theory, you know, I modified my reference photo. I don't know how it's going to look, but we're going to, you know, we're putting this shadow on this building. We're going to see if it, <laughs> what it ends up looking like. So start up here. Kind of already went over this frame here, but it's okay. Let's see if we can lift that a little bit. And we can. Can I lift this a little bit too? Can we do it? Yes. So now we got some interesting shadows, interesting angles, um, you know. Thank you, Grape Soda from Japan. Hope everything going going well. What's going on, Don? Um, <laughs> do I follow Marcello Barenghi? No, I've never heard of him. Never heard of him, actually. Yeah, 50% cotton and 50% pulp. Yeah, it's probably about right. That's not bad. I mean, it's not bad to have like pulp paper. It's just not as, you're just not going to get, it's going to be hard to get like effects that you see from other artists that use this kind of paper, you know. And it's it's going to be frustrating sometimes, but, you know, if you just get used to the kind of paper, you can create anything, you know. It's not a big deal. It's just like brushes too, you know, like when I did those, plain air sketches I was showing like I used the same brushes for like two years three two one or two years and it like they were just crappy terrible brushes they weren't I didn't I didn't always use this kind of brush you know apart from art what else do you do uh, make music um, I do graphic design I mean that's kind of art I guess I make music uh, you know I'm just a creative guy I kind of do Stuff like that. I actually have a whole instrumental album planned. I have a whole concept album that I'm going to start working on. I've kind of already started working on it. I have some ideas. 
I have each track kind of planned out conceptually what the idea behind it is. And the whole album is a concept album that tells like a whole, it brings you on this whole journey. And uh, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see if I can actually make it my vision, what I want it to be. But, you know, like piano tracks with strings and like maybe guitar too sometimes. Like just a lot of different stuff, but it's going to take you on this journey. And uh, it's a whole very deep kind of concept with a lot of different meanings and layers and hidden, all kinds of just crazy stuff that I've thought about. Um, it's kind of my, it, it kind of mixes in like all my philosophy about life and my thoughts and everything. So ever think of doing digital art lessons on YouTube? Um, no, I, I don't really like digital art anymore. I really don't like digital art, to be honest, uh, as far as doing it. I respect it. I think it's great, but I don't really want to do it. Do you lift do or do sporty things? Um... I wish, you know, I used to work out and stuff. I wish I had time to. I really want to, to be honest. Uh, just, I just don't make time for it. And I'm always just too tired to do it, <laughs> to be honest. Just working on my business and all this stuff is just too much, too much, you know. Okay, what do we do next? So I kind of like this shadow. It's kind of, it's pretty cool. Um... I guess we do have other shadows here we could focus on. Got some other shadows here. And like right under here. There was like these little things too. I don't know what I don't know what they are, but I'll give them shadows at least. Being a little heavy with my brush work today. Guess that's just how I'm feeling. Oh yeah, we got this sign too. Okay. Right, 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 right. Got this little sign here. It's pretty cool. Let's have to turn this down. I don't know why it looks so bright. There we go. That's better. More realistic. Okay. <clears throat> What's going on, Ben? Been building a computer lately. That's cool, man. Hope it's going well. You should build me one, dude. I need a new I need a new laptop. I need a new computer. Because I can stream better. <laughs> I'm just kidding though. But I am going to buy one eventually. Um, is there a reason you leave white gaps in the blue of the houses? Yeah, there is. Um, number one, I just want it to look interesting. Um, you know, I have some white gaps back here as well. There's some down here and in the ground. Uh, but also because I'm trying to just match the uh, kind of the textured look of the building here with like paint chipping off and stuff like that. And at the end here, I'll probably do like some isolated splattering for darkness a little bit of dark splattering to give more texture to this building as well so yeah that's kind of why but a lot of times a lot of sketch there is sometimes when i sketch and do things that i leave white gaps it just looks more i, I like having a sketchy look you know to my work it's just like a preference it doesn't always happen let me see if i can find anything quickly here that has that kind of look you know I mean sometimes I just try to incorporate it into what I'm already seeing so there's white gaps here on these houses it just gives it more energy you know all these little white gaps this is painted from life these are all plain air uh, this one has some white gaps here you know little areas it just adds a little bit more to it you know you know a bunch of white gaps here like this, I left white gaps down here, but it's it's kind of like showing brightness on the water, you know? 
So yeah, it's just it's just like a sketchy kind of you know, when you have something like this where it's fully filled up, like it looks fine, but it's just like it's missing it's almost missing some energy or something, you know? Like uh you know, like this one. It's just missing like certain kind of quality of like sketchiness in a way. Oh, that one's really nice. I really need to go back here and, and do that again. A little stream there, or a big stream. But, uh, and it's not just my style. It's, it's a lot of people do it, you know, a lot of sketchers and stuff. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, all right. Where do we go? Where do we go? Guess this door, maybe. There's some, we're just chilling today, folks, you know, we're just uh, talking a lot and just chilling, hanging out. Let's see, we got a shadow under here. Pretty nice. I like that. I'll probably put a bigger one, actually. Um, I don't really want to use this little brush, though. Now we need um, just a little bit bigger and more cooler, like a purple. Purpley blue will be nice, I think. Right across this white, it look really nice. See that? There we go. That's the that's the cool thing about this watercolor, like the the translucency. You know, you get this over the white compared to over the building. This nice translucent look to these shadows and stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm so uh, I I crack up every time I hear you talk about those little brushes. Little brush hate hurts me. I'm sorry. Yeah, I did. Yeah, Ben, I did kind of change where the light's coming from. Well, I didn't really. I mean, if you look in my painting, I mean, obviously the light's coming from over here. You know, you got all these shadows pointing a certain way. Everything's going this way. All the shadows are on this side, so the sun's over here. But I just I modified the reference. Um, I just added like a bigger building in the front here that's casting a shadow on this building. That's all I did, you know. Um, yeah, exactly, Nathan. I'm kind of I, I try to approach my art as like an urban sketcher. That's kind of what I since that's where I kind of started. You know, when I have all these sketchbooks of plain air that I've been doing the last few years, like, this is what I love to do, you know. I just, I just turned it into this kind of a thing <laughs> so that you guys can watch me while I do it instead of me making videos about it outside somewhere, which I need to do more. I only have 118 plain air videos on my plain air channel. I need some more. Okay, let's go, let's go. I just realized if it's in the light, I don't want a lot of dark right there, actually.
Actually, this should all be shadow going down because of the side of the thing there. Just like here. Nice. Nice work. Okay. And of course this window probably be all darker. At least something like that. See when you leave little gaps like that, it just makes it more interesting to me. To this kind of style that I'm doing, you know. Had a lot of hard edges today, but you know what? I'm kind of okay with it. I'm kind of like, you know what? It's a strong light, you know? Might as well just have a bunch of hard edges to jump around. Jump around the painting a bit. Not, not mad at it. Put like some other little things going on in this door. Gives it a bit of depth there. Really like that. And a little bit of warmth there, that red. That looks really cool. It's very subtle here. It looks so much stronger on there for some reason on the screen. But it's very subtle here. Uh, I really like it. Okay. I think I got to move into a smaller brush now, unfortunately. For, uh, fortunately for Lane, of course, she likes the smaller, smaller brushes. Of course, but it's all good. We all enjoy different stuff, you know? It's the cool thing about this. Cool thing about art. <laughs> uh. Let's try to put in some of these, uh, so we have, edge of the roof there. There is a shadow actually coming down. I should just do that. Got to prioritize my strokes here. Oh, I like that. Shadow. Might as well just merge that with the window. Don't want too much like little details back there. Just need like broad strokes and just little touches of stuff. Okay. There we go. Nice, nice work. Nice, we got it, we're doing it. think. <laughs> I 
Okay, so this part is where my paintings always fall apart when I have all these rows of windows and stuff to do. So I'm going to look at some inspiration right now, actually. So you got this sergeant book. So let's see how he handles these kinds of things. Look at that. Okay. So obviously I didn't leave any little white spots or anything. So how does he handle these kinds of stupid things? You know, so if we look at this, get some ideas. Okay, there's some very loose kind of windows. Um, we got this one over here. This looks a little bit more constructed better, more thought out, but still, each thing's like one stroke. And if you look at these windows, these strokes here, it's like one big brush stroke. And not a lot, you know. So that's interesting. Um, yeah. So... You know, there's some ideas there. I think we just keep it minimal because this is on the side as to the edge. It's not important, right? This is like way over here. We don't have to worry about it. Someone on Twitch asked uh, Embers, welcome back, man. I think uh, I've seen you around there. How do you find a good balance for experimenting? I feel like I am sometimes overdoing it. Well, that's part of the process, right? That's part of learning. I do that all the time. I've done paintings where I, I definitely over, over done it, you know? Um, sometimes that's, that's going to happen. It's going to happen sometimes where you, you overdo it and uh, there's nothing you could do just built to learn from that. That's all you can really do. Uh, that's all I can suggest that you do is to just learn from it. And that's what I was just talking about, actually, is like, you know, it's just, uh, sometimes you're gonna overdo it. But you gotta, you know, that's why it's called experimenting. You just learn from it, but, uh, thanks, Bruce. Appreciate my book collection behind me here. <laughs> Oh, thanks, Uncle Bosco. Yeah, we're an hour into this painting, and I've actually, you know, I haven't really been very productive with this painting experience. I've been very talkative. I apologize, folks. Um, all right, we're putting two windows per building, it looks like. That's what these strokes ended up being. So we'll just, like I said, be try to be minimal, not worry about it too much. As long as something's just there and it looks like, you know, buildings, whatever. It's fine. I'll just put one down here, maybe a little bit bigger. Put some smaller ones there. Not a big deal. No big deal. There we go. And I think it's fine. And like, if I even wanted to, I can just spray like part of them. It'll just like gently soften it. You know, we don't have such a harsh line there. Whatever, not a big deal. Okay. Um, I recommend using the handle of one brush to create the perspective line, the windows. Oh, you mean like laying the handle down or actually like scraping into the paper? Thanks, Dan. I appreciate it. Do you agree with the statement a painting is only as good as its sketch? Uh, I mean, if you do a sketch beforehand, a painting is only as good as its sketch. 
Well, if you're paint, I think what that's from Carlson's book, right? John Carlson's Guide to Landscape Painting. That sounds familiar. Um, oh, okay, Lane just laying it down. Yeah, that's true. I could have done that, but I feel confident about it. So, I think, I think, um, if you're painting from that sketch and you're using that as your as your guide, as your reference, which a lot of artists did back in his day, back in his time. They would go out on location, they would do a little sketch, right? And then they'd bring it back to the studio and create a larger studio painting, you know, work out composition and just, they would create, they would literally create a painting. They wouldn't worry about what life, what it really was out there. They were focused on a real designing something, a composition. It's not always my goal. It's not always every artist's goal, but that was their goal a lot of the times. So in that sense, uh, yeah, it probably is only as good as, as the sketch you create. I mean, it's, it's going to be more challenging. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's an interesting quote, that's for sure. Interesting quote. My cat wants to go outside. Hey, come here. She's gonna mess up in the blinds. She keeps pawing at the blinds on the door. I feel like we need like a little suggestion here of just the bottom of these buildings. Come here. We're not going out. Come here. <sighs> Gotta wait till I finish this. All right, let's see, where are we at? Let's evaluate. So, Yeah, we got some we got some good stuff here. What kind of sketch weight do you use for these sketches with watercolor added? Oh, oh, okay, okay. Uh give me one second. So I use This is what I use. Strathmore toned gray. They also have toned tan. I've used toned tan a lot. Just go on Amazon and you can find these uh, if you're in the US or UK or wherever. Uh, try to find these at least online somewhere. This is the paper I use personally for these sketches where I add the watercolor to them. So. I think uh, Bruce asks, um, where did my brush go? Here we go. I think it's really important to leave some of the white paper showing through, through here and there throughout the painting. It seems to help the painting for some reason. Your thoughts on it? Yeah, I agree. I think so. If you're doing like sketchy or loose kind of work, I think it does. It kind of like, I don't know, it adds something to it. You know, it's hard to like say why, but... Okay, I, th I know what it needs. And I don't know if I'll be able to do it very well, but I'm gonna try. So on the window sills here, I wanna like dry brush or get, at least try to get some texture. Some of these like window sills. I don't know if it's going to look good, but. Like here, there's like a lot of texture. And this is experimenting. So like I'm kind of pushing and like, oh, is this going to look good? Is it going to ruin it? But I, I like 
since this is so flat and kind of not textured, I want to add little bits of texture like throughout the rest of it, you know? So if I can get like a nice bit of texture on these lighter areas to show that this thing's kind of old. And what I'm doing is just using minimal water, minimal paint, and just moving very quickly over the paper. So I'm getting these kind of like dry brushing looking strokes. I'm letting like basically the texture of the paper tell me where the paint's going to come off. I guess it's good. I don't know. <laughs> like we need like a little bit of more here just to solidify that a bit. And I'm going to, I'm going to splatter on the building too as well. I think with like some darker blue or brown or something, maybe both have like a mixture of it. It's actually not much texture on these up here, but I feel like it kind of needs it. Why not? Okay, let's not do too much of that. Let's try to soften some of that too. Made it a little more interesting, I think. Hmm. And right, there's links in the chat to uh, the sketchbook paper there. How do you start a watercolor painting? Um, you should probably just go back to the beginning of the video and watch how I started it. <laughs> oh, that's kind of cool, Don. So using like different color, different colors of watercolor in the spray bottles rather than just water to create texture. Oh, I see. So if I made like a stronger like green water and I could like spray green water on there, that's kind of cool. That would be interesting to try. I don't know how well it would like work or what it would do, but. Yeah, the bottom down here would be definitely good for some splattering. Um, I'm still feeling like, I don't know. I don't know, what do I feel like? I, I mean, I like the shadows and the sense of light here, I think, so. I don't know that I want to like darken the shadows at all. I feel like it's all pretty good. Um, just trying to figure out what it, I, yeah, I guess splattering is like the next thing I can really think of. So let's see what do I want to cover up. Do I want to cover up the top of the building? I mean, maybe not all the way up or all the way down, I guess. Um, thank you, Embers, on Twitch. I love the Canadian goose you painted and drew. Thanks, I appreciate it. That's one of my favorite ones. Um, might as well show it if I have it here before I do this splattering. Yeah, it's kind of one of my... It's probably one of my best planar sketches I've ever done, no doubt. Um, yeah, this one. Like that one is like, 
I should have retired right after I painted this because there's there's no way I'm gonna top that. There's just no way. And we got some persimmons on the tree. These are really good. Like eating them. That was like a failed painting. Yeah, I mean that was like that was the peak. I imagine this was from two years ago. Three years ago almost. Wow. And I can't even paint that good anymore. Uh. Yeah, exactly. I can do better. I know that for sure. Yeah, Cinder's Lair. Yeah, the uh, Strathmore sketchbooks. So the way that I do those, they definitely buckle if you use water. It's a lot of water. You can't, you can't really do washes with them. So the way that I use them, I, I add, it's literally like opaque watercolor, <laughs> like very little water, not a lot of, I mean, it's not opaque watercolor. It's not like right out of the tube or anything. It is watered down, but minimal water. It's very difficult. Uh, you know, so I almost dry, like I get a lot of dry brushing. This one I did yesterday is probably one of my favorite ones. This is watercolor, but see the dry brushing I get? So this is very dry kind of techniques of watercolor to use in these sketchbooks. You can't really use it for washes and stuff. If you're gonna do that, you might as well pick up some toned watercolor paper, which you can find on like Blick. There's like toned watercolor paper. All right, let's do these splatters before I like give up. Okay. Um, I think I'm gonna cover up the ground for now as well just for right now because I don't want to ruin it with like dark really dark splattering I only want this kind of area so let's see what happens <laughs> a little too wet there. Too much water. That did it though. I know it looks really dark. Don't worry. Don't worry. It's going to dry lighter. Most likely. Most likely. And some of these, you know, it's a little too much, so just take them off. We can always resplatter more. So that added a little bit of texture down there. Don't know that it was enough. Hmm. Yeah, more like gouache. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I used to do oils too. Oils are really good. Yeah, hopefully I'll do some plein air adventures soon. I keep saying that. Maybe this weekend. I don't know. We'll see. Um. Okay. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. I feel like it's missing something, but I just don't know. Everything. Everything is very... Plain and plain, plain, plain. It's like, it's killing me. It's really killing me. Like, uh, I don't know. I don't know. But I think I, I want to make this line here like more interesting. Like, I don't know. That was kind of stupid. I guess that's kind of cool. Just want it to look more like painted, you know? Maybe the same here too, maybe we put like another. Some lines on there. 
Add some darker blue at the bottom of the building. Yeah, you might be right about that. Uh, the splattering wasn't really enough. Maybe a dog walking toward us in the alleyway. Man, what do you think I can just draw a dog on there right now? You need to graffiti down the alleyway? <laughs> yeah. You know, it does need like something back here, huh? I, I don't know what it is. Oh, you know what? I think it needs, we need like some directional kind of stuff, right? Like, um, <laughs> I like your creativity though, man. I'm not knocking it like, oh, a dog. Like it would be cool having like little figures and stuff, but yeah, I don't know. Um, maybe let that shade dangling lead to something, a small bench to the left of the door. Oh, I see what you're saying, like, have like a, yeah. I was thinking of putting some line work in here, like, or like a sidewalk or something, you know, I don't, I don't know. It needs like, we need something that like draws us somewhere, but, um, excuse the backseat painting. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it helps. I, I like hearing all these, because... Any one of these little ideas might lead to something. I might think of something different. Like, oh, we should do this. Or, like, you know, I was thinking of adding, like, a, a potted plant back here or something. Or maybe even up here. But then I realized, like, uh, I would have to be opaque. And I don't really want to do that. Um, so then I was thinking, like, okay, maybe, like, some line work really subtly. Suggesting, like, some kind of walkway or, uh, you know, something. But I don't really want to distract too much back here. But... I feel like it just needs a little bit of something here. I don't know. Um, yeah, that's kind of why I made this thing. I was, I was making it leading to the door here, which is kind of, this is like my focal point, right? So this is what I invented, this, this whole shadow here. And I linked it with this shadow. So, you know, we have these interesting diagonals and all this stuff leading us here. So... Name of the street and the wall. Oh, that'd be cool. Where would I put that? Like, like we need like a little sign or something on the wall like, for the name of the street. I get what you're saying. A person walking down the alleyway. Yeah, I'm just not confident I could pull that off. It would, it would make it cool, right? If I could do that. I mean, it definitely would. Tree branches from the sides. Okay, that's interesting. Tree branches from the sides. Hmm. See, that feels too risky to me. <laughs> Tree branches from the side. That's like, whew. That's, there's no coming back from that one. Some darker splattering in the sideways. Darker as it is in shade. Throw in a dark shadow there. Do, 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 do. So you think darken up back here? You know what's interesting? The, I feel like the buildings would be darker technically because the ground is getting light from the sky. But I just wanted to keep it all as one big shape. But technically the buildings would be darker because they're upright. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I don't know, guys. Basically, I don't know what I'm doing. If you guys haven't noticed, I don't know what I'm doing. Um, okay, here's an idea. I'm getting I'm getting little ideas now. Little. I'm look. I was looking at the photo a bit more. Real quick. So like some little chimneys here. Um, you know, it would be cool if there was maybe one here. I 
and then let's see where the sun see we don't really know where the sun maybe it's coming up this way something like that shadow on the roof for that just gives it a little bit more something back there um Power lines, yeah, I was just thinking, yeah, yeah, exactly, Bruce, yeah, that's what I was going to do next. I was just thinking, like, maybe maybe there's a building behind this main building, like, from here, and, like, having a power line come down to this building, and, like, maybe some back in here as well. I was going to dry brush some power lines, and that would kind of fill up the space a little bit. That's what I was just thinking about doing, because I could see a little bit in the in the photograph, you guys see the reference, there's, like, some weird power lines there, but... I would kind of move them a bit. Um, you know, I could make this little walkway here. I could make like a bricked walkway. That could be interesting too, actually. So let's do that as well. So I think, it, yeah, I think it's just missing like a small little things like this to kind of just bring it home, you know? You know, some of these stuff, some of this stuff might not be exactly necessary, but just to make it a little more interesting. So like, you know, different, that's kind of dark, huh? Didn't really want them that dark. That's not what I'm going for. One lighter, just like that. Just like that, like, make some grayer too. Let's see. Let's lighten that up as well. Yeah, I just want like glazes, you know? Just like really subtle. I don't know. I don't know if it really looks like bricks or anything, but at least it's like, it makes that area a little more interesting, I guess, to me. Let's try to draw some going into the shadow. Just add some texture to this foreground. Okay. Yeah, I'm I'm purposely leaving out the shadow from the overhang. Uh, I just made a smaller shadow here. I don't really like a long, big overhang. Um, so I'm I'm leaving that out. So that is a that is an artistic choice that I'm sticking with because I added this shadow here. So um, this would be like too much to have in there, I think. What about adding touches of ink? Eh, eh. The door have a number? Oh, above it? You know, a little number here? Eh, I, I don't know that that would really... I could put something there. Like I could just make up something. But I don't really know that it's necessary, you know. I guess it helps, huh? Every little thing helps, right? There we go. 117. I don't know what it is, but 
good number, I guess. Um, let's just look at the painting itself. What does the painting need? Let's not worry about the photo. You know, we're kind of past the photo, right? So what does the painting itself need? So I, th I think maybe like some kind of power line here coming down to this building. I can try it, man. I can try it. <laughs> no one even knows what he's doing. It's an illusion. Yeah. Maybe some cobblestones. Yeah, that was a good suggestion. I did, that's what I did. Um, sorry, I'm just reading back, seeing what you guys... Yeah, because Candy said, exposed bricks on the bare wall. And then I thought, okay, we got bricks on the ground. That could be cool. So then I thought about doing that. So this one idea led to something else. Because I didn't want bricks on this wall because we're having like chipped pain and stuff. Um, yeah. Anyway. I like when I start talking about like ideas, how should I fix this? And everybody starts talking. We get more people talking finally. It's nice. There we go. A little shadow from, because this, even if it's in shadow, it's in reflected light because we can see it. So then I'm adding a darker shadow in there. It's kind of like a dark accent. Same under here. You know, we have a shadow with reflected light and then a darker accent above it. So it's kind of what I was doing there. Um, let's see. I really feel like I should just darken this building a little bit uh, in the shadow because it, it's it's really the same value as the ground and I just it, it bothers me for it to be like that um, so I think I'm just gonna glaze it ever so slightly at least in some places just to separate it a bit and give more color um, I don't know let's let's just try it at this point let's just try it and see what happens Maybe at the bottom, mostly. We can start at the bottom and work upward. See if I like it. Because now the building isn't upright, so it's going to be a little bit darker than the ground, and the ground ground's receiving more light. The ones in the background, I can leave that kind of how it is, not a big deal. But I think this one in the foreground, it just makes it more interesting to have it be just a bit darker with stronger color. Yeah, that really helped it. That really helped it. It separated from the background. It separated from the ground plane a little bit. I just made the shadow pop more now. So this is a sign that I may be going too far. Yeah, you're true. I mean, it's true, but you're right, Lane. You're definitely right. It could be going too far, but I think if I let this dry and then do texture on top of it again, I think that'll be, I think we're right there. I think we're right at the edge of the cliff here, so to speak. You know, right at the edge of the cliff of too much.
Maybe add some birds in the sky. Nah. Meh. I'm against birds in the sky. They, they need to stay in the trees and on the ground where they belong. Stop clogging up all the sky. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't. I, I haven't really done that before. I don't really feel confident of adding birds in the sky. I know a lot of watercolorists and people do that, but the title of the this the title of this painting should be one one seven. Yeah, it's true. Building one one seven. Okay, let's try this again. Let's try this again, folks. We'll do a little bit of splattering and then probably call it a day. I think this one's pretty good as it is, you know. I, I think there's not much more I really want to add to it. I think we just skip the power lines and stuff. I don't want to overdo it and risk it too much. It's kind of nice without them. But let's really get some nice splatters going on here. On this building. Maybe up a little bit more. Kind of transition from a lot of splatters to a little bit. Might as well overdo it if we're going to do it, right? And we get rid of some of these. Yeah, it's a little crazy now. Looks a little crazy looking now, but it's just because it's wet. If you guys saw it, they look so dark. I don't know why they look so dark. But I think I should take the tape off and just be done. We'll see what it looks like in a minute. We'll let these, you know, it's going to look different when it dries. There it does. <laughs> Uno diez y siete. Y siete. Yeah, I'm not very good with Spanish. Yeah, there's not enough sky for all the birds in the world, you know what I mean? Just not enough sky to go around. <laughs> uh, thanks, Jeremy. I appreciate that. Yeah, I think it's a good um I don't know, it's a good effort from from the uh from the uh reference, you know what I mean? You know, there's one last thing I could do. There's always one last thing, but I think it'll really help it, to be honest. It's very small, very subtle. Since the sun's coming at like an angle, I want like this part of the windowsill to have a little bit of shadow too, actually. And the reason I'm saying that, I'll show you here in a second. Mainly because I wanted the door here to have... A little bit more. I wanted something there to support the door a little bit. And hopefully it'll just give more. Yeah, I don't know. Doesn't really help. Let's just stop before I ruin it. Okay. Let's take the tape off. Glad you guys like the changes from the reference. I agree. I think it's pretty cool. I think that having this shadow in here really makes a difference. You know, it really makes it just gives it a little more something, you know, to me anyway. Come back to it after I eat something. Yeah, exactly. Come back. I'll come back to it after dinner. I'm sure it'll be just fine. Let me step away for like one second. I'll look at it in a minute, or like 10 seconds. Mm. 
Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I still don't know. I still don't know. I don't know. Okay, let's just stop. That space just feels like too blank to me, you know? I feel like we need like a little flower pot with a tree in it or something. Like, it just feels so blank there. I don't know. I don't know. But, uh, anyway. Uh, Jesse asks me, uh, Brandon, do you ever hold your artwork into a mirror to see it in a different perspective? Yes, I do sometimes. I haven't done that in a while, but I should. I should hold this one in a mirror and see what it looks like. I wish there was an easy way on the computer I could just flip the image right now. There probably is a way to do that. I just don't want to mess with it, but, uh, definitely helps sometimes. It definitely does help. Yeah, I, I think it's cool. I think we're good. Yeah, that's a good point, Romare. Yeah, I wanted like, yeah, exactly. I wanted like more diagonals. I wanted more contrast, more interest. Something leading us to the middle here, to this, not the middle, but to the doorway over here. Kind of a light versus two-thirds light, one-third shadow. It's kind of what I was going for. Kind of what I was going for. Yeah, that's true. Taking a photo with your phone. Yeah, that's usually helpful too. Because you, you'll see the image shrunken down into like a thumbnail. Normally I can just, if I turn my webcam here, I can see the, my painting right here, like in a really small thumbnail and I'm like, hmm, okay. It's nice. Not bad, I guess. Not bad. Not too bad. Definitely different than the photo. You know, the photo has darker shadows, but... I don't, I don't necessarily know if I agree with that being in a painting like that. You know, because you can't really see into that shadow. You know, it's very, very dark. And I know in reality, it wouldn't be that, it wouldn't be that strong or that dark, you know. Mine's definitely looks different, but I'll try to hold it up. Let me see if I can hold it up for you guys. So... Definitely, I'm trying to get more of like a realistic look to it, you know, sense of light into this thing. Who knows? Who knows? I don't know. I definitely don't know. Smooth the edge of the shadow in the door. You mean this one here, this dark one? Yeah, I, th I did think about that, to be honest. Because this, this little doorway, it's it's a little too rugged for the area, but it kind of goes with the style of the building, like all kind of old and broken down. But You know, if I just tweak a few little lines, I don't know how much is really going to matter, to be honest, but... You know, don't want it to be perfectly straight anyway, because then it gets kind of boring. But yeah, I guess that's better. 
so it's better. Part of me likes having some of it be softer, some of it be broken looking. Yeah, that's better. There we go. Okay. All that stuff's just small stuff that doesn't really matter, you know. But um the edge of the door. I don't what which edge of what door? Maybe dark in the shadow of the back building. You mean back here? These. No, I can Photoshop my logo right here. Yeah, that would be cool, huh? Put my logo there. <laughs> Uh, yeah, let, let me, um, let's look through this book real quick, folks. Let's see, let's see, let's take a look at some other paintings and see. Now pay attention to the shadows, right? Pay attention to the shadow versus the light versus the dark shadows. So keep this in mind. And then let's look at some of my favorite artwork and let's see what we sh if there's anything more I need to tweak with that thing. But I'm going to get off here soon because my stomach is just about to growl. But let's see, let's see what we can find. If there's something, anything that's similar, any kind of lighting scenario. Um, possibly similar. Okay, we got some shadows here. Looks like. Now that's very, very loose, as you can see, the way you painted this. Very loose. And this, imagine, this painting is much larger than the, actually, almost same size. So this one's 10 by 13. Mine's 9 by 12. So this is literally almost the same size as what I just did. But look how sketchy his is compared to, to mine, you know. You know, look how he suggests he's using a giant brush for this stuff, for the whole painting. I'm not saying that's really a good painting, but it's interesting to take, and like he did it again, he did another painting, a larger one, of the same thing. Uh, what's for dinner? I don't know, probably some uh, rice with tofu, sweet potato, something like that. Okay, I'm not really seeing anything that has a similar lighting. I'm seeing stuff that's... Okay, here we go. Here's some light with shadows. But still not, not similar. But I just like seeing how he sketches stuff sometimes, you know. Get an interesting... Yes, I am vegetarian. Well... I'll eat fish, like, I'll eat salmon, like, three or four times a year, something like that. So, not completely vegetarian, but 98% vegetarian. I've been like that for many, many years, like, 10 years, 12 years or something. Here we go. So, look at this. This whole thing is in shadow, except for this light back here. So, sometimes dark shadows don't always, it's not always the case to get something realistic. But, you see, he does have these really dark darks in here. And there's a photo of the real scene today from 2007. And that's what it looked like when he painted this back in 1904. Almost 100 years apart. Look at that same kind of... That's crazy. Green water and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, tofu is pretty dope, man. Tofu is pretty good. If you cook it right, I just, I just stir fry with... And then I, I add like a teriyaki sauce. It's pretty good, man. You can add just soy sauce. You can just leave it with some garlic powder. You can leave it plain if you want. You know, it's all good. But yeah, so I don't know, guys. What do you think? Looking at these, I mean, his buildings are pretty blank. You know, he has a lot of variation here. A lot of variation. 
and color and stuff. Well, here we go. This is a gr this is great. Look at this one. So here's light versus shadow. See how see how close they are in value. What do I do first before I start my painting? I draw a sketch of it. Um, yeah, but it's interesting seeing, you know, that's a, that's a white building probably. So it's interesting seeing how light his shadows are. Well, the only thing I mentioned Nathan in the back was um, Um, like power lines, there's like some power lines in the back, you know, in the sky coming down from like, it's the only thing that could really like add more to this painting or maybe like adding like a little vase here with like something growing in there uh, or trees back here. I could put like trees growing way back here, but I don't know, it wouldn't really make sense. But other than that, You know, his, his stuff is just, there's more in it, you know, there's more windows, there's more things, there's more stuff. Mine's just flat kind of faces a building, so it's a little more challenging. You know, he's got water here, boats, and all kinds of stuff. So there's a little more interesting things he can do compared to mine. But, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, this is one I saw earlier. That's a very interesting harmony, very bright. Anyway, I don't know. I don't know. I don't think I nailed it exactly, but you know what? It's it's not bad. It's not bad. It's just an interesting composition, you know, having this flat face of the building. It's it's uh you know, it would be more interesting like someone said if I had like a figure back here walking or something, but it's kind of cheating to do that, you know. Like it's <laughs> Because you're automatically your eyes gonna go to a figure, you know. It's kind of like a, a cheap kind of thing to do, but yeah, I think it's I think it's fine. If if I look at it later and I want to do something, then I'll add like little. Maybe I can add power lines between these buildings or something, you know. But I don't know. My painting is perfect. Well, thanks. I appreciate that. Um, you have tips to paint sky. Yeah, uh, just keep it light like this, wet into wet. Wet your paper first and then put color in there and just keep it, keep it really light. Maybe the back shadow could have blue tones. It does, it does. It really does. You know, it's not going to be as blue as this because this is a blue building. And I think maybe that's throwing me off too, is that like we have blue stuff coming towards us and then like warm stuff back here. But it's pretty interesting. It's an interesting kind of thing going on. But um, anyway, this warmth kind of brings us forward. It's really not that warm in person though. It's very weird. Uh, anyway, guys, I don't know what else to do to it or whatever, but um. Yeah, I think it's busy enough. I think we got enough going on. Um, yep. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. I guess I'll, I'll call this one. Call this one done. I guess I can. I might as well sign it real quick uh, before I get off here, and then I'll gonna get off here. Because I've been on here way too long. Didn't realize. Okay. My stomach is really starting to growl now. And my cat is coming to sit on my lap. So yeah, I think, think we're done. She's done. I'm done.
Thanks everybody for tuning in. Appreciate it. Try to sign it here real quick. Hopefully not too dark. It's a little dark. There we go. Okay. All right, folks. I guess that's the end of this painting. It was it was interesting to try, you know, this kind of it's a very different kind of composition than I normally do, so uh yeah, it was it was a good attempt. Thank you guys for tuning in. I'll see you on the next one. Um yeah, next week. See ya. Peace.